Americans love their trucks, and who doesn't love the classics? For over 40 years, Chevrolet's C10 pickup set the bar for American-made trucks. And even though production ended almost 20 years ago, fans still crave the C10's iconic styling. Today in our studio, we'll show you how to keep your favorite classic truck looking brand new. We'll enlist some friends to freshen up this 50-year-old beauty and give it an interior that'll last another 50 years. Motorhead Garage, presented by Topcoat, is coming at you. This is Motorhead Garage presented by Top Coat, and this is a very cool episode because we have this 1970 Chevy C10 truck. It's a great looking truck on the outside. It's cool on the inside too, I think, because it's really like a time machine. I mean, this is what it looked like 50 years ago, except for a couple of changes. And three point seat belts have been added to make this thing safer, and the owner has whited out some of the gauges on the dash to give it a cooler look. But speaking of cooler look, Dave is here from Brothers Trucks, and we're going to do a little bit of gussying up on the interior here. What do you have in store for today? Well, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make this a little bit more comfortable for him. We're gonna upgrade a little things. We're gonna go ahead and switch the stereo out from a mono speaker to where we're gonna have dual speakers in the back. We're gonna take our carpeting out. We're gonna go ahead and uh, put some sound ending in, get it nice and quiet so we can hear our speakers better. We're gonna go ahead and get our seat in a more comfortable position so it's a lot easier to drive. We're gonna clean up uh, some things on the radio face. I got a few other little blings that I'm gonna go ahead and show for you too. Very cool. So obviously we need to pull everything out and start from the ground up, right? Right, yeah, you've only got a few bolts on the bottom. It's no big deal. We'll be out of there in no time at all. Let's get started with carpet. I don't. All right, one of the first things we're going to do is put some tape down because we didn't want to mess up the paint here. Right, you always going to be careful scratching up your paint. You don't want to do damage when you're trying to upgrade. And then we take the sill plates off because those are our original equipment. Right. We don't want to scratch those up. We want to keep those fresh. Yeah, right. Even when we're going to be putting new sill plates on, I still like to save that stuff because sometimes I'll put it on a uh, patina truck or something like that. Maybe one of my buddies can use it. So always keep everything. One man's trash is another man's treasure. Excellent. Right. And then, of course, it was time to take the seats out. And you noticed a couple of things as we looked around the original bench seat. The right, couple things were missing. The bolts out. Yeah, several bolts missing. I understand when you're putting things back together, you might just go, okay, I just got to stick a couple of bolts in here. But be safe. Put all your bolts in. Got it. And a safe ride for sure. Right. And then uh, the seat belts are sticking through, so we had to work on those. Right. Just push them on through and unbolt them. Yep. Yeah. yeah the trickiest part here, we had the bolt. Uh, holding the seat belts down. Right. It was a, a tough angle to get to. Yeah, the three point bolt system has that extra bolt on the side that kind of gets in your way. So you can take it the, that off or just the bracket like I did because I was honestly a little lazy. <laughs> now we had taken the passenger side sill plate off because that's the side we took the seat out of. Right. Now it's time to get the carpet off. So we took the second sill plate off. Right. Again, same deal. Yeah. Saving that uh, as the original, making sure we, we still had in good shape. Now there were some speakers already under the seat here. So we had to contend with those. Right. Yeah. Just be careful. that it, always stuff hiding underneath there so don't just grab stuff and rip it out take your time and and watch for little things that are going to snag you there's nothing like a project where you get part way into it and you pull a wire thinking it doesn't do anything or doesn't mean anything and right yeah. now you got more work you got it right yeah work smarter not harder right i love it Finally, time for the carpet to come out. This is the original carpet. It was in decent shape. It was in real good shape for the age. Yeah, crazy good. Came out a lot easier than I thought it would. I thought oh, it would yeah, be a little yeah. more rotten. So. Yeah, yeah. I think time machine description you had was absolutely perfect. Cool. And then which leads us to the sound deadening material that was underneath. I thought we would pull that carpet up and just see a mess, a gooey oh, mess of totally. who knows what. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Normally, that is what you'll find. You normally find glue, rust, uh, all kinds of stuff down there. So what you're going to want to do is clean that up really, really well because what we're going to be doing is sticking on some sound deadener and sound deadener does not stick to dirt, rust and everything else. So we get in there, we use degreaser. Degreaser also does not like to stick to stuff. So after we use the degreaser, I like to use a wax and grease. In a pinch, you can use carburetor cleaner, brake cleaner and get that clean. Then go ahead and blow it all off. It has to be absolutely dry in order to have that stick. We want to make sure this is totally dry right. to put our stuff in, so let's uh, get to it. We'll finish blowing this out. Dave's going to do that during the break. We will be right back to show you more on the interior of this cool Chevy C10 right after this on Motorhead Garage presented by Topcoat. Hit it.
You are riding along with Motorhead Garage presented by Top Code, and we are in this really cool 1970 Chevy C10. I'm with Dave Welch from Brothers Trucks. The last segment, we started to give this interior a little bit of an overhaul. We started by tearing out the seats, taking everything out of the car, including the carpet, the sound deadening material that was in it, and of course the residue cleanup at the end to make sure that our sound deadener would stick into it. And then you rolled out the sound deadener for us during the break here. Uh, I got to tell you, when you came in with this stuff, I thought you were kidding. I thought we were going to see an entire mat that was going to cover the floor for sound deadening. But uh, what's up? Just these little tiny pieces? Covering every square inch is a bit of an overkill, and you have consequences to that. First of all, it's hundreds and hundreds of dollars for that stuff. When you cut it out and lay it down, it takes five, six, seven hours to do all that. If you have, uh, you have to roll it all out. If, if you don't cover up and get into every single nook and cranny, and you have an air pocket there, then moisture is going to harbor there, and then it's going to cause rust on your floor. So we don't need to go to all that trouble. If you have just a square inch, it'll sound dead in a square foot. Now all the kits from Brothers Trucks come with instructions, very easy to uh, easy to follow. And we looked at the diagram to see where all the sound deadening fit in this truck, uh, easily laid out. And we wanted to dry fit it to make sure it all is there and to make sure it, it goes in the right place. Yeah, you start gluing too soon and then you're gonna make a mess. So trial fit first, then glue down. You got it. Take your time with these. Yeah. So they can be hard to peel. Yeah. And once you get them down, they're down. Yeah. They're really super sticky. You're not going to get a second chance. You got it. So you want to be gentle the first time. Use your hands, just use your fingers to, to mat it down. And then and then what do you do from there? Well, uh, then you want to roll it out. And if you don't have a roller, no big deal. Just get yourself a spray can, a really big socket, and roll it out. But make sure it's really good and flat. Perfect. You're doing it. You don't need any special tools. Do no. And we did have one wire to contend with before we get to the next step. It was in the back of the cab and uh, that is your gas sending unit wire. So I just like to uh, tape those down because when you're doing all of this and you're looking for holes and things like that and you have the razors and stuff, you could easily do damage to the wire. So tape them where they're not going to be anywhere near anything that's getting bolted down or any holes you're going to be cutting out. So on to the next step, the heat shielding insulation. Right. It, once again, there's a diagram from Brothers Trucks. We check that out. There are hole guides on it as well, so we can get a general idea of where the holes are we're going to need. And we looked at the diagram, got all of the everything dry fit and laid out to see how that looks. Yeah, so again, it, it, you only have one shot at this. If you glue it down and then you uh, try to pull it up, it's just a bloody mess. So really have it set up, pull part of it down, only pull part of it up, put glue on the metal and put glue on the Judy, and then use your hand to roll it down. And take your time with it. Right, yeah. Yeah, you get going fast, you might cut your thumb. <laughs> Really? Nah. <laughs> you got to be careful, Dave. Yeah. We only have one casualty in this project so far, so that's good. You don't have to be surgically precise with this step. Not really. Uh, a little bit here or there. You have the uh, tape that you're going to go on top. You know, you want to get it as close as possible, but you don't have to break your back on it. Here's a tip I like, marking all the holes with screwdrivers. You start with a little one that's going to poke through the surface. Right. And right. then mark it, then replace it with a big one. As you right, go. because trying to find them after the fact is tougher. If you don't have 16 screwdrivers, all you got to do is just get a, a sharp, porky thing, climb underneath the truck, and then just poke up, and you can cut around the holes. But I don't want to climb underneath the truck. And I like how you get very technical with the sharp, pokey thing. Sharp, pokey thing. Nice. We glue down the first section and make sure you cover both surfaces. Right. Now we start up in the footwell, work our way back. The only tricky part here is marking those holes, Dave. Just like to make sure that they're marked. It is on the padding, but um, sometimes it'll be a little bit off depending on how you put it down. When I cut the holes out, I like to make it a generous hole to cut out also because the thickness of the juting, the thickness of the juting on the back of the carpet also, you get two layers, then it's going to be pretty thick and sometimes it makes it difficult to bolt down the seat or something. So cut them out generous and it'll make it easier on yourself. And the kit from Brothers Trucks comes with some great silver tape to trim it all up. Right, and it comes with a glue I'd like to mat too. That, that glue is pretty expensive. Uh, and the tape's pretty expensive too. So go ahead and tape up all your seams and your edges and everything like that. It's gonna make everything look good and it'll keep uh, noise and such from coming up through the cracks. 
and now onto the carpet. Yes. Now the temptation is to just grab it, throw it in the truck, and away you go, but you gotta take your time with it. Yeah, really what you wanna do is you wanna set it out in the sun and kinda just let it get nice and warm and malleable. Now one of the things you wanna keep in mind about the carpet is that it's actually a molded carpet. It is actually shaped to fit on the floor um, with the same exact bumps and humps and everything like that. So then, after it's warmed up in the sun, we put it in the cab, and if I can, I lay, leave it in there for days and days and days. The longer it does, the, it just molds in better and better and better. Once you start actually laying the carpet down and getting it to fit, it's a job you can do by yourself. Yeah, it's a lot nicer to have a buddy help you. You don't have to run back and forth from one side to the other. Right. We're gonna start at the front, just like we did on our heat shield. We're going to go ahead and we're going to um, glue it on down. We're going to make sure our buddy's holding the carpet nice and firm because right in this situation, sometimes it'll jiggle around on you. And when you glue this down, you're in it, baby. You're, you bought it. So we glue our front nice and secure. We roll the back of the carpet forward. We lay down our glue. Again, we'll put it in the, the juting of the bottom of the carpet and on our silver top of the heat shield so that everybody's sticking really well. We're gonna go ahead and roll it back with our hands, pushing down at the same time. And then when we get to the holes, we're gonna go ahead and make sure that we've got those centered and marked. And we'll just keep rolling right on back until we get to the back end. Well, this carpet looks great and it smells great. It's got that new carpet smell, I love it. And when we come back, this car is also gonna sound great because we are gonna upgrade the sound system. We'll show you how when we come back with Motorhead Garage presented by Top Coat right after this. You are locked into Motorhead Garage presented by Topcoat and we are having a blast with this 1970 Chevrolet C10 pickup truck. We've given the interior a major overhaul, pulled out the seats, the heat shielding and the carpet, replaced the heat shielding and the carpet and the sound deadening of course, and the new carpet looks great in there. Now it's time for the next step yep. in upgrading this interior. Dave, thanks to you and the folks at Brothers Trucks, we are going to give this sound system a little boost. And you know, riding around in a 50 year old truck like this, back in those days, it sounded like you were listening to a clock radio, one little speaker in the yeah. dash. Yeah, just pitiful. And the owner of this truck has upgraded the actual stereo unit, right. but he's still running that one speaker. Yeah. So what are we going to do to help him out? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to go from one to four. We're going to put them in each corner. So we've got kick panels going, and these are specifically designed to go into the corners. So we're going to have four pumping out, versus one. Alright, let's get to it. Yep, yep. Now for the first step for us, we did a little recycling on this truck, something we took out earlier, right? Yeah, you just uh, want to get the old juting and anything, old t-shirts, anything, and stuff them in the corner so that all the noise is going forward and it doesn't give any reverberation into the metal. You don't want to hear that rattle as you're going right, down the street. Right, so that'll solid that up. When you do something like that, make sure that you're not using the shiny side of the juting because if it makes contact, then it's going to blow out the speaker. So you also notice that I put tape over those just to be on the safe side. I also taped the wires down to the corner that I'm going to put them so it makes it easier to grab a hold of them and, and, and work ahead. And the next step is actually throwing the speaker in there. Yeah, so all you gotta do is real simple. You just put it on in, you mark your holes, you go ahead and screw it down. Of course, I put the speaker in first. I drilled the holes for that and screwed it down, put the cage on top. And then all you gotta do is just put it in, bolt it on up, make sure your wires are clear, they're not on anything sharp, and you're ready to rock and roll. And then we move on to the front. Right. And now here in this 1970 C10, these have vents up near the driver's knees and uh, and the passenger's knees as well. And you got to take care of those vent handles first. Right. Yeah. Just take them on off. Go ahead and put the uh, speaker up in there. Get it all trial fitted and make sure you like it. And then go ahead and uh, put a self-tapping screw in the front and in the bottom and get it solid. Then you can go ahead and do the handle, but it's a bit tough to hold it in spot and do the handle at the same time. So secure it first and then do your handle. Had a little bit of a modification we had to make to this one, a little clearance issue with the emergency brake pedal. Right, so it'll get pretty close to the speaker right here. So one of the things I'll do is just go ahead and unbolt it from the front right here, go ahead and move it over to the side and bolt it back up. If you're not comfortable with drilling holes into your dash, you can just simply uh, take a little bit off the edge of the uh, brake release and it's no big deal. You're gonna be stopping fine. 
But a solution we chose was a little elbow grease. Yeah, I like to move it over and keep it complete, make it look more original. All right, so one more step before we actually start routing our wires. Right, yeah, so you're gonna wanna know what's front, what's back, left and right. So you're gonna have to generally connect the wires up to the speakers, figure out who's front, back and side. Then you can go ahead and run all your wires and do a final terminal off of your wires. Well, it's a pretty simple operation. Takes a little bit of time to get yeah. everything right, but everything looks great now that you got it in. Yeah, it really didn't take any time at all. Well, I can't help but notice you're sitting a little low here in the cab. Yeah. So we're missing a seat, and we're going to take care of that when we come back to Motorhead Garage, presented by Topcoat, right after this. We are making television here in our Borla studios at Motorhead Garage, presented by Topcoat. We've got our friends from Brothers Trucks here and Dave Welch. You guys are the experts on every Chevy truck from 1947 to 1987. I am not an expert, but I can tell you that the seating position in these trucks is terrible. Yeah. What have you guys done to fix that? Well, what we've done is we've made it more comfortable for you. You're going to come down a couple of inches. It's really where the factory should have put it in the first place. I'm not sure why they had it that high, but it's a lot more comfortable. Your arm is going to be even with this here when you're sitting out like that instead of this kind of deal. So it's just a lot more comfortable. It's still adjustable. You can get it exactly where you want it and then bolt it down and you're ready to rock and roll. Now we've pulled the seat out of this truck and we have noticed a little surprise, something we didn't expect. Yeah, somebody's already cut into this and welded it back up and all that kind of stuff. Problem with that jazz is, you know, all the time that it's gonna take to do that. And then they had to kind of guess where to put it and stuff. We've taken care of all the guesswork for you. The brackets just bolt on, no problem at all. No cutting, no welding, no nothing. Just bolt them on, slide the seat back in, you're rolling. Well, we got the seat in, it feels really good. The, the previous owner, as we saw, had it lowered, Yeah. but it wasn't the correct angle. And now with your brackets for Brothers Trucks, it's sitting right, feels right. pretty good. Nice and comfortable, almost done. One last thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you'll notice that it has the slots in the bracket. So I'll just go ahead and position this exactly where the customer wants it. Go ahead and tighten everything down and then we are done. Well, we're not quite done. Not quite done. Yeah, a few little things to add to the interior so you can show me what the icing on the cake looks like. Right, you always wanna think about everything through and I'm gonna show you a few more bells and whistles you might wanna think about it at the same time. All right, you know, Dave, if you've got your truck torn down to this level on the interior, there's probably some other stuff you want to do while it's stripped out like that. So what did you bring with you from BrothersTrucks.com? Right, you don't want to put a brand new carpet on there and then take this old dirty sill plate and put it back on. You're going to want to get new ones. While you're there, you might want to look at these uh, rocker covers right here. They normally get all dinged and scratched up, and you're thinking, oh, I should paint it or something like that. Save yourself the time and trouble. You put these on, you look cool in no time at all. Piece of cake. Right. Love it. Gas pedal, brake pedal, all that rubber's been on there forever. You're going to want to replace that. We've got some extra little things that can make them look a little bit better. You've got a couple different choices in that. So, you know, go to the catalog, go online, see all of your choices, think your project through, make sure you've got everything. You don't want to get halfway through and then go, oh man, you know what I should have done. You know what I should have got. So think it all through and get everything out. And the thing I like about these is it's for looks, obviously. Oh, yeah. And performance. Right. Because you're going to be able to, to grab the pedal with your foot. Right. And for safety for the same reason. Oh, yeah, for sure. I really dig that. And what else did you bring with you? Well, this right here is the high low beam switch. And you don't want to put your carpet in just to take it back out and do a little switch like that. So you got to think about a lot of little things. For another little thing that you ought to think about is this guy right here. Now on the radios, a lot of original ones were taken out. People carved them all up. They put in the radio and then you can see all the ugly stuff on the side. But if you go to our YouTube channel, Brothers Trucks YouTube channel, you're going to see a video that I did on how to install this and a lot of other videos on cab corners, rust repair, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Just hundreds of videos for people to see. Now, what if I'm not quite sure what I need for my entire project? How can you guys help me out? Well, that's what everybody on the phone's there for. That's what everybody in the company's there for. We want to see your truck get back on the road, and we're there to help. Another thing, too, is you go to that YouTube channel, like I said, and there's a lot of videos there, and we're doing videos every single week to show you how to get your truck back on the road. That's cool. Their YouTube channel is great, and their website's great, too. Check them out at brotherstrucks.com. Well, that music indicates that we are out of time for this episode of Motorhead Garage presented by Top Coat. We invite you to check us out on our Facebook page until we are back once again next week. So until then, from our Borla Studios, so long from our entire crew.